Ah, uh, yes, winter winter again. In our last video, we talked about George's writing style and how it impacts the delay of book 6. We talked about his gardening and, well, Winds has been growing for 12 years now. It's going to be the biggest book of the entire saga so far. Maybe too big. Today's question is, should George R. R. Martin split Winds of Winter into two books? First off, before we talk about a potential split, let's look at what George had to say about the size of The Winds of Winter. It's a big, big book. It's a challenging book. It's probably going to be a larger book than any of the previous volumes in the series. A Dance with Dragons and A Storm of Swords were the two largest books in the series. They were both about 1500 manuscript pages. I think this one is gonna be longer than that by the time I've finished it. I guess that only makes sense if you look at the amount of time that he spent and continues to spend on writing the book. George famously split up what was supposed to be book 4, A Dance with Dragons, into two books. Among other things, this was due to George R. R. Martin's gardening. He intended to do a 5-6 to six year time jump after A Storm of Swords, but after a year of writing the book, he realized that it didn't work for certain characters. It was too exposition heavy and the book constantly had to flash back certain events within the time jump. He ultimately scrapped the idea and rewrote the entire book. And A Feast for Crows was born. Feast has gotten so big that they were considering publishing it in two parts. Martin ultimately ended up moving around 500 pages to A Dance with Dragons instead. When Dance was finally nearing its own completion, George seemed to have the same problem again. The book was simply too big. At one point late in the process, Dance was considerably longer. The page count had gone beyond 1600 and was creeping up toward 1700 to my alarm. At 1700 pages, the book could not have been published in a single volume. Several things happened to bring it back down. First, my editors and I made some decisions as to where to end this book, which involved shifting a few chapters back into the next volume. With a series like A Song of Ice and Fire, there are always judgement calls to make as to where to end one book and begin the next, since you're really dealing with one long story. Does this scene work best at the end of one book or the beginning of the next? Should this character go out with a cliffhanger or with some sort of resolution, be it permanent or temporary? So, it happened again. George had to move around 200 pages from A Dance with Dragons to The Winds of Winter. As we all know, this sadly did not boost the writing process. After around 12 years of waiting, it looks like he might face the same problems yet again. For the third consecutive time now, because his publishers actually wanted him to split Winds of Winter up. Here's a screenshot of George answering a fan question about a potential split. It seems like he doesn't want to do that again. So, should George R. R. Martin split it up again? That all depends on how well he's been able to handle writing 20 POV chapters for a single novel. Because yes, we are looking at around 20 POV characters for The Winds of Winter. We're going to talk about the actual story of book 6 in the next video, starting with Brendan Stark. For now, let's look at what an absolute nightmare of a task George has at his hands in general. I presume that John, Danny, Tyrion, Jaime, Arya, Sansa, Fionn, Cersei, Bran, Davos, Asha, Barristan, Victarion, Aaron, Samuel, Brienne, Ariane, John Connington, Melisandre and Arya Hota all have POV chapters in the Winds of Winter. Some of them are confirmed of course, some are not, and some of them will undoubtedly have to die in this book. My personal candidates for that are Victarion, Barristan and John Connington. Again though, topic for another day. There is also a big possibility of merging point of views in this book, at least temporarily and during certain events or battles. For example, that could be the case for Fionn and Asha, Victarion, Barristan and Tyrion, Jamie and Brienne, Ariane and John Connington and of course Melisandre and John, if John does indeed remain a point of view character in general. While temporarily or permanently merging point of views could definitely help advance the story overall, God knows where the hell the aftermaths of some of our battles take us and where George intends to land with Winds of Winter's ending. It seems odd to talk about rushing something when it comes to this book, you know, 12 years and all, but that's probably what's simply killing off people emerging characters POVs, some of whom we've spent entire novels with could end up doing. So at the end of the day, what's right, what's wrong, who am I to judge man, I've never written a single book in my life. But if you would ask me, 
I think they should let George finish the novel just the way he intends. Whether that be 1,800, 1,900, 2,000 whole manuscript pages of Winds of Winter, and then maybe you can split it up. But pushing another 300, 400 pages to A Dream of Spring, of course it's kind of comical to talk about A Dream of Spring at this point, pushing those pages to another book again is just going to be the end of it. Realistically, if you're looking at George R. R. Martin's process, so far he's written about 75% of Winds of Winter, I believe. He is two-thirds of the way done. So I still believe that, yes, we are going to get Winds of Winter at some point, whether that be in three years, in five years, who knows. But I really do believe that it's vital to let this man just finish this book the way he wants. One scenario could be, if he is finished, you could drag the release. I mean, that's probably going to make even more money. Okay, let's say he releases it in 2024. And I know, delusional and all, let's just say he releases it in 2024. And in 2025, a part two comes out. I don't care if it's going to be the shortest book of the series so far. He keeps on bragging about this is going to be the biggest book yet. And I don't think that really matters. Because at this point, ask yourself, would you really care if you get to read part one and then part two in a year or six months or whatever it is, I'm assuming probably not. So just let this man publish his goddamn book the way he intends. Because I keep reading and this is actually why I make this video as a follow up to the last one. It kind of fits with the gardening and all. But just let this man for once finish where he wants to finish. So maybe going for part one and part two, splitting it up, not by location, not by whatever limitations there are, but we shall see. I'll definitely keep you updated on this channel about everything Winds of Winter. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to subscribe. We're gonna be very busy with the Winds of Winter now. We recently did a poll on the community tab. I asked you guys what type of content you wanted to see more of and you wanted a lot more of Winds of Winter. So that's, so that's definitely what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with Brendan Stark and then I'll team up with my buddy Eric from the Grease Goblins channel. So there's lots and lots of Winds of Winter coming and yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and see you later. Is there anything that you've always wanted to ask me? <laughs> because George I will <laughs> yes yes there is something I want to ask you All right. how the fuck do you write so many books so fast <laughs>